Hello everyone, it's time to talk about cooling in stationaires again. This is not my first video on cooling, but they keep changing it, so let's make a new video. And currently we have four different types of active cooling in this game. First off, we have the wall cooler, and I'm not gonna talk too much about it because it's absolutely trash. There is not a single scenario where this isn't ridiculously underpowered. No point in using it. Um, the next one is the AC. The AC will obviously be the star of this video. We will look at plenty of different AC setups. We also have the winter spawn. And the winter spawn is a very good alternative, especially on um, Venus. Uh, on Venus it can be a great alternative to the AC, but it's kind of hard to rely on 100%. It's more of a mid to late game item. Um, and then we have the portable AC. And the portable AC is a bit of a story in itself. And we'll talk more about that guy later on in the video. Now, uh, we are starting off at Mars. And that's more or less to prove, uh, uh, to make a point. Because if you're playing on a cold planet, so if you're playing on Mars, Europa, or a moon, then you don't need any of these. Um, I have a silly little solution right here, we, where we just pull some air through a couple of radiators, and this is able to keep my base temperature down without a problem. And of course this can be made better and, you know, uh, even more efficient than this little silly setup, but the principle is the same. If, you are, if your base is on a cold planet, use the environment to, to help you cool. Uh, this type of cooling scales extremely well, uh, and there is not really any need for any active cooling. Now, if you feel like using it, um, you shouldn't necessarily feel bad. There are some argument for it, sure, but it's mostly for convenience in that case and absolutely not for a necessity. So we'll focus most, mostly on the hot planets, Vulcan and Venus. And we are starting off on Venus, the hardest planet to cool down your base on. And we have a single AC setup here, and for everyone that's been playing with the AC already, knows that this single AC is not gonna cool down your base. A single AC is able to support about 200 degrees temperature difference. So this guy is not gonna get you room temperature. So we of course need to put them up in a series, where one AC cools down the waste pipe for the next AC, which cools down the waste pipe for the next AC, etc. And so on, and wouldn't you know it, success, we have cold gas, right? But this little setup here with only four ACs is a house of cards. It will not be able to sustain much of a load on here. If we set up a radiator here, it will buckle under the, the, the load instantly. And a small setup with only four ACs isn't going to even keep up with the sun heating up the base through the windows. So before we start to talk about what the ideal setup is, we need to establish a way of rating the different setups. And for that we are borrowing from real-world ACs, uh, we are using something called a coefficient of performance. And that is simply the cooling capacity divided by the power consumption. And I think most of you will understand what the power consumption is. That's just the, the power the setup as a whole uses. But the cooling capacity, I want to explain a little bit more in detail. And the cooling capacity of an AC setup like this is essentially the amount of heat energy I can put into this pipe while the setup as a whole keeps the temperature at the temperature I want it to be. And I'm going to assume throughout this video that the temperature we want here is room temperature roughly around 20 degrees, right? 
So if we get out a um, uh, pipe heater, you will see a lot of pipe heaters in this video. Uh, let's get it the right way up. There we go. And this setup here will be able to support about 800 watts of heat energy. Uh, and a single pipe heater releases about 1 kilowatts of heat energy. So this means that this setup here will not even be able to handle this one single pipe heater. And to go back to our coefficients of performance, if this setup is able to keep up with about 800 watts of heat energy and it uses a about 1400 watts of electrical energy that will give this uh, a coefficient of performance of 0 0.56 so let's get a sign up here and we'll give this the coefficients of performance equal to 0 0.56 and I can tell you right away this is garbage. So, you know, enough theory. What is the ideal setup for Venus? And the ideal number of ACs you want is 8. 8 ACs in a row is the ideal setup for Venus. Or more specifically, you want 1 AC per 55 degrees. So you take your outside temperature minus your target temperature and then divide that number by 55 and that run that off and you should get 8. So 8 ACs in a row is the ideal number. If you're using 7 or using 9 it's go not going to be horrible but your performance will be lower. So this setup here with, with um, 8 is able to support a total of three and a half kilowatts of heat energy and still keep the the temperature here roughly at room temperature and this is a bit cold so it could probably go a tiny bit higher but uh, but not by much and the setup as a whole uses 2.84 kilowatts and that gives us a coefficient of performance of 1.25. And again, that means for every watt of power I throw at this system, I get 1.25 watts of cooling at the end here. And of course, that means we need this number to be as high as possible. And in order to improve this setup, all we really need to do is to set the temperature to be specifically 55 degrees difference. And this setup is identical to the setup over here, pipe-wise. The only difference is that the temperature on the ACs are set specifically to be 55 degrees uh, lower than the next guy. And that means that some of these ACs will idle quite a bit. Uh, it means that the cooling capacity is now only 3 kilowatts worth of cooling capacity, but it, it uses quite a bit less power. And that will give us, uh, so this setup will th thus give us a coefficient of performance of 1.43. So for every watt of power I throw at the system, I will get 1.43 watts of of cooling and that's significantly more than we had over there for more or less the same setup but of course we can do better this setup over here is um, it's still it's still eight in a series you still have eight levels of cooling but here we have doubled up some of the uh, the ACs doubled or tripled up some of the ACs on the hotter end. So what this means is that we have um, we have a cooling capacity of three kilowatts worth of cooling for the price of 
4.26 kilowatt of, kilowatt of electricity. It gives us a coefficient of performance of 1.43. It's about the same as that guy over there. Slightly less, not really, uh, not really a difference. It's about the same. But the, the real reason I'm showing you this is because we have essentially doubled the cooling capacity of these guys, but we have not doubled the number of ACs. It's only 50% more ACs. And we still maintain the, the, the good coefficients of performance. But this is not the only way to set up an AC. This is how I've seen most people set up the AC. And I guess this is how most people intuitively would approach the AC. But there's many ways to set up an AC. And the most ideal way to set up an AC is with the setup over here. Well, technically, this is the most ideal uh, AC setup on Venus. But we'll start with this guy. And there's a lot of pipes going on here and uh, volume pumps and stuff and I'll explain it more detail further on. But this guy is uh, only 6 ACs. So it's the smallest number of ACs so far. Uh, and this guy will cool down 7.5 kilowatts worth of... Uh, worth. It, it, it will give you 7.5 kilowatts worth of cooling. And with, with only a power consumption of 2.2 kilowatts, this gives us a coefficient of performance of 3.4, which is more than twice, a lot more than twice the best case we had over here. And we have less ACs. So, um, so moving on, we have this big guy over here. And here's there's a lot of going on here, but you can recognize that the set we have here is just the center column of this big guy. And like we did with the, with the setup there, we are just expanding the hotter side. And even though it looks very big, I have spread it out on purpose to make it easier to see what's going on. It's only 12 ACs, which means it's the same number of ACs we had on this guy. But now we suddenly have uh, a whopping 17 and a half kilowatts worth of cooling. And for the price of 4.3 kilowatts of electricity, that gives us a coefficient of performance of 4.0. And that's about as good as you can get it, at least legitimately, let's say. So that means that for every watt of power I throw at this system, I get 4 watts of cooling at the end here. And I have a dummy setup over here that I will use to try to explain how this works and why it's so much better. So over here there is no load on it, the, it's not connected to anything and that's just to show you how it, uh, how the dy dynamics here work. And whenever you see a red AC, it's just set to the maximum temperature. It's just heating as much as it can. And likewise, the blue ACs are set to the minimum value. It's just cooling as much as it can. And they of course have ICs in them. Um, I have of course the, the code that these are running on. You can probably find it in the description. Uh, my code has a few quality of life features and safety features and stuff, but it's really not that magical. Uh, all the IC really does, all the magic going on here, code-wise, is just to control the volume pump in such a way that the AC do not get more gas than 100% pressure efficiency. So the AC just calculates how much gas the AC wants in order to get exactly 100% pressure efficiency. Nothing more, nothing less. That's all the code really does. So to try to explain how this works, try to think of, uh, try to see it from the perspective of the blue pipe. I'm, I'm, go I'm not gonna pull up the, the atmospheric tablet just yet, but this guy has some gases in it. It has some temperature 
whatever. The the volume pump through, or the AC through the volume pump grabs a little bit of that gas, right? And it this guy is set to heating. So it will take a little bit of that gas and it wants to heat it, so it needs to grab as much energy as it can from the same pipe. And then uh, and then it, it sends that off to the output or to the red pipe. But that means that so far the blue pipe has lost a little bit of gas, but proportionally more energy. The blue AC works in the reverse, and the blue AC replaces that lost gas with, uh, with new gas that's already very cold. So in practice, when these guys work in, in pairs like this, uh, in practice you have a pipe that has an absolutely constant uh, mol molar value, so the mass in here will stay constant, uh, but the temperature gets polarized. So you end up with a very cold pipe and a very hot pipe. And that's basically the principle working here. And if we go back to uh, back to this guy, you can see that uh, it's essentially just three of those pairs in a series. And over here it's those three pairs in the center, but we double up the center one and tri triple up the, the hottest side. And that's essentially everything that, that goes on in this setup. And the reason this works so much better than the other setup we started with is because uh, it's most mostly because uh, the, the input source of the AC is the same pipe it uses for the waste which it means that the input and the waste will always have the same temperature and that means that we completely bypass the temperature differential efficiency and the temperature differential efficiency is by far the most punishing of all the efficiencies here so in by, by setting the ACs up in pairs like this, we completely bypass the temperature differential efficiency. It's always 100% temperature differential efficiency on all of these ACs. And that is, that's primarily the reason why this setup works so much better than the, than the setup we started with. But there are so, some pros and cons here. And the first one if we start on this, is that this uh, this setup here works with the, the with the dynamic of um, uh, heat capacity in the gas, which means that you want a really low heat capacity gas. Uh, that means either use pure nitrogen or pure volatiles. The difference between nitrogen and volatiles is minuscule. You use the one you have uh, available to you but you need to specifically use either nitrogen or volatiles. Uh, this guy, however, do not care what kind of gas you have in them. You can use absolutely whatever gas or mixture you want. It truly do not care what kind of gas you have in the pipes. And I think I even made a point of it by making this nitrogen and this CO2 and this pollutant. They, these guys do not care. The other thing this guys uh, this setup has uh, in favor of them is that none of these runs on ACs. Uh, there is no ACs, uh, ICs. Uh, there is no logic in any of these uh, air conditioners. While these guys has an IC in every AC. The other downside to this setup is that because they operate with the volume pumps. Uh, we also have to consider the, uh, the power consumption of the volume pumps. And the power consumption of the volume pumps is included here in our rating, but the power consumption of the volume pumps scales with how much, how many liters it moves. Which means that if you run these pipes on a very low pressure, the volume pumps needs to pump a very high amount of liters which will sort of kill your your um, your efficiency because you will use a lot more power on pumps. 
So this means that essentially the, the power consumption of the volume pumps will decrease with more pressure in the pipes. And here I have about 10 uh, megapascals. You really don't need that high. I would say five is fine. You could probably go as low as two megapascals, but still two megapascals in these pipes. That's a lot of mass. And in the long run, it doesn't matter too much, but the initial startup time, when you first build the system and start to fill up the, uh, start to fill up the pipes, that's a huge amount of mass that needs to be cooled down before you get any actual cooling effect on the end. And when I say a long time, this setup will probably take anywhere from 30 minutes to maybe two hours if you pressurize it really high. So that's a long time. Uh, this guy, however, uh, doesn't really have a, a pressure. Uh, it, it does have a pressure, a minimum pressure it needs, but it's only it's only 112 kPa. So it's really low pressure you really need in these pipes. I, I do think I have quite a bit of pressure here, but you don't need it. You can see I have been lazy. All of them are exactly one kilo uh, mole, and that's because I have just spawned them in. But if you initialize this with a very low pressure in all of the pipes, so just 112 kPa, then then uh, it's a lot less mass that you have to initially cool down before you get the um, before you get active cooling on the end here which means that while this guy isn't necessarily the most efficient it will give you um, active cooling earlier than this guy or uh, that guy over there will the one downside though to this guy is that you need to individually fill every pipe and for those that has already built them you know that that's quite tedious to fill each of these pipes uh, individually. This guy do not require that you can just fill it at one end and they will distribute the gas throughout the system by themselves. So that's one benefit I guess to this setup. But I do have one setup over here, so pipe-wise it is exactly the same as this guy. I have just mushed it together to make it as compact as I could, but the big difference is that this do not have volume pumps and it also do not have ICs. So this means that it's um, a completely codeless setup. There is no uh, no logic working here. It gives us uh, about six and a bit worth. Uh, I think it's running on 6,300 right now. And um, it keeps the temperature here uh, nice and cold, no problem. Which means that for the price of 2.2 kilowatts electricity, it we get a cooling uh, coefficients of performance of 2.9. Now that's not as good as this guy over here and a lot less than the big big boy, but it's still all more than double what any of these got, any of the of the first one got. And the real benefit of, the, of this guy is that it's almost instantaneous in uh, in initialization time. Because it runs on very low pressure throughout the system, uh, like down here we only have 53 kilopascal, and to initialize this system, I have um, I have a pressure regulator here set to just keep this at uh, 150 kPa. So this isn't doing anything anymore. You can just turn this off. You get roughly 150 kPa in here, and just by the dynamics of the system, it will cool down the, the end product here by more than six kilowatts of cooling capacity. But as I said, this has basically no initialization time. When I first made this with, you know, I just placed down everything, empty pipes, everything. I started the pressure regulator. I started all the ACs in 
and within less than a minute, I would say maybe 30 seconds, this guy was cooling at the full cooling capacity. So this means that this setup is not only highly efficient, it's extremely fast in its uh, initialization time. It, you know, uh, from, from startup until you get active cooling, uh, it's extremely fast. And because it's the same exact pipe setup here, you can build this early game, have instantaneous cooling in your base, and then once you uh, once you get the, the materials for ICs and everything, you can start to just replace the one-way valves with volume pumps and put ICs in the in, in the ACs and start to pressurize it a bit more, and you can squeeze out even more uh, more efficiency. And whenever this isn't good enough, you can expand it to this guy and have uh, more or less the best efficiency you can have on Venus. And if you're looking at this and thinking, you know, that's a, that's, that's a huge amount of cooling, you wouldn't possibly need that much cooling. But you would, most bases, most medium to big size bases needs about this much cooling. Uh, looking back at my old... Um, the Venus space, it needed quite a bit more than this actually. Uh, like I said, this is 17 and a half. I think my old Venus space needed something like 20 uh, kilowatts of cooling capacity to, to keep in balance. So this is an unrealistic amount, but it's not, you know, it's not something you start off with. So I guess the next step is to jump to Vulcan. And with Vulcan, we have uh, the benefit of having a very uh, reasonably cold nighttime atmosphere that we can utilize. And we are stand standing on a huge tank because we are sucking up a lot of the, that nighttime volatiles gas. And we are using that as a baseline for our AC setups. So I have the regular AC setup here, and here we only need two. So Again, one for every 55 degrees, and because our starting temperature is only 140, that means we get on. We only really need two, and that will also give us the, um, the cooling capacity of seven. Seven kilowatts worth of cooling capacity gives us a relatively cold end product here, and with the power consumption of 710 watts we get a coefficient of performance of 9.9 9 here on Vulcan with this setup. But of course we can also set up this, uh, set the ACs up in, in this configuration. And like we saw on Venus, that gives us, gives us a, a, a huge efficiency boost. And here on Vulcan it can cool down 16 kilowatts worth of cooling. And with the power consumption of 712, that gives us a coefficient of performance of 22.5, which is, you know, very high. So this setup here on Vulcan is uh, extremely efficient. But on Vulcan, the problem also is that on, uh, on daytime, the temperature will go, uh, uh, you know, it will get very toasty midday on Vulcan. And building an AC setup that's able to keep up with that is just completely pointless. What we want to do is essentially we disconnect from the world during the daytime. So we just, during the daytime, we are just storing the heat essentially in this hot pipe. And that's the reason why I have a huge tank here and such a high pressure in this pipe. And that's simply because the more mass I can cram into this pipe here, the less of a fluctuation this temperature will have. If I go low, low pressure, low volume, then during the daytime this temperature here will just skyrocket. But by cramming a lot of gas in here, the, the, the fluctuation in the, between day and night in here will stay relatively small. And uh, when the night time comes, we have a tower of, uh, of activants here. 
that simply just blows the air through some heat exchangers and that way we cool down our hot side, our working gas as much as possible and uh, we can probably just go set the sun time to be sunset and we can see the, the kicking in there you go and this just simply cycles air through the, the heat exchangers and it will cool down our hot side at night time so this means that in practice, and this is true for uh, both of these uh, AC setups, uh, so during daytime we are essentially disconnected from the world, we just store the heat energy, and at nighttime we just uh, try to cool down the gas as much as possible, and so we are just, we are releasing all the heat basically at nighttime. And that's pretty much it from Vulcan, and that's pretty much it for my main part of this video. Uh, the next segment I want to talk a little bit about cheeses, and if you don't understand what a, a cheese in video games are, uh, Urban Dictionary has a really nice definition, but essentially we um, have some fun with the game mechanics to see if we can uh, break it a bit. Let's, let's call it that. And I want to quickly mention the old cheese, the old AC cheese we, we used to have, where you just placed a, a back pressure regulator on the waste port of the AC. And for some magical reason, that just made it super, uh, super efficient. So, you know, a lot of people did that. And you can go back to my older videos and you will see that again and again and again. And but the reason I want to bring it up, because that was very controversial. Um, it was named a cheese, because people felt it was way too powerful. But I want to mention it, because I, we have uh, a rating system in this video. So what was the rating system of the old cheese? That old cheese had a cooling capacity of 6 kilowatts and a power consumption a total power consumption of 400 watts, which means that that old cheese had a coefficient of performance of 15. And here on Vulcan, we have already broken that barrier, and not even just slightly. This is this setup right here is quite a bit more powerful than the old cheese, which means that if I had gone back to my my Vulcan world. I could re implement this cooling system here and it would actually outperform the old setup that people felt was cheesy by quite a bit. But of course, uh, we have new cheeses now and I'll go through them and I'll show you that as well. And coming back to Venus, this is the first cheese I want to show you and it's the um, it's the portable AC, and I wouldn't argue really it's much of a cheese because we're just using it more or less as intentional, I think, by by simply mounting the AC to uh, to a pad here and giving it a wireless battery with a wireless charger. This guy cools with a cooling capacity of of uh, four kilowatts of cooling capacity, and. The AC itself only uses 200 watts. The Omni transmitter uses 100, which means that this setup right here gets a coefficient of performance of 13. But because uh, Omni transmitter can support mm, several portable ACs, you can push this up to um, close to 20 if you use enough uh, portable ACs. So this means that on Venus, this is a very, very capable cooler. And it absolutely crushes the best thing we had uh, back there. But the real power of the portable AC isn't even the cooling capacity or the power efficiency. It's the waste pipe. Because the, the portable AC do not care what temperature the waste pipe is. Uh, so you can use this to heat up your, uh, your furnace or whatever. 
you can it just truly do not care what the temperature is it cools no matter what so for all of the people that said that you know the old ac you used to use the old ac to heat up your furnace you can use a portable that will do the job just fine and the next cheese i want to show off here is the furnace cheese and uh, this has been going around on the discord quite a bit and someone figured out that uh, if you use solder, solder is the best one. You can use others, but solder seems to be the best one. By by just having an ingot uh, ingot of solder, just looping around in a furnace, every time it inputs a new chunk of solder, it will cool down the internal gases of the furnace. Which means that even though this is sitting outside in in in, in Venus atmosphere, it has no problem keeping a temperature of a hundred degrees. So. With a, basically a source of infinite cooling down to 100 degrees, it makes the rest of the process straightforward. And I have just a regular setup here for my, with my ACs and with a, a hot pipe that is never going to go above 100 degrees, it means that this has a cooling capacity of 20 kilowatts. And with only a power consumption of 766 the, this gets a coefficient of performance of 26.1 so this is absolutely so far <laughs> so far the most broken setup uh, cooling setup you can build on venus but i still have more to show you and this guy over here is quite a bit special setup now you can see the you can probably recognize that the AC setup is about the same shenanigans we have been working on over here but now it's connected to a Stirling engine so the AC here is not doing anything magical at least not nothing more magical than we did over here the AC's job the, the job of the AC here is simply to facilitate the the Stirling engine and it's this actually the Stirling engine that does all the magic here. So we have a cooling capacity of four kilowatts worth of cooling. Now you might think that, you know, that sounds really terrible compared to what you have just seen uh, elsewhere. But the, the real gimmick here is that this guy doesn't consume power. It's actually generating a surplus of power. And it's again it's the Stirling engine that does all the magic because the Stirling engine will take uh, heat energy and turn it into electrical energy which means that it's not only generating power it's cooling the system so we get uh, essentially not only free four kilowatts worth of cooling we get a bonus of about I think a kilowatt yeah about 1.2 kilowatt of, you know, uh, surplus electricity for free. So that's, you know, uh, a funny setup. Um, and if you think this is broken, uh, let me just tell you that you can also combine, you know, the, the Stirling engine with a portable AC for some really broken mechanics, if you want to go that route. Uh, so, you know, you set up a, a Stirling engine in the same room as a portable AC and use the waste on the portable AC to, to heat the, to heat the Stirling. I, I, I don't even want to think about how broken that is, but that's pretty broken. But I have one last thing to show you, and that is this guy sitting over here. And... It's just this small little one AC sitting all by itself with absolutely no connections to the outside world. So this guy is tasked with just cooling down this room most of the time. And um, this guy is, did this, let's just say that if you thought the others were exploits, this is a real exploit. And this guy just happily runs on 100% efficiency, but you might ask yourself, where's the heat energy going? And the answer is, it just 
gets deleted. The, I, the AC here, of course, coded with, you know, a little bit of magic code there, is just deleting heat energy. About, you know, it's running on full efficiency, so it's deleting about 14 kilowatts worth of heat energy every game tick. And because it only uses, what, 370 watts, that gives us somewhere around uh, uh, 37 coefficients of performance. So this is, you know, um, probably the most powerful cheese exploit, if you would. Uh, and I am not actually going to show you how this works. I'm gonna keep this as a trade secret and a mystery for those who wants to, those who want to try and find out how it works. And with that, I think I have shown you everything I got on the AC and cooling in general. Uh, we have gone through quite a bit of different uh, AC setups, some more powerful than others, some more legit than others, and you can draw your own line on how how much you want to bend the game to get your cooling done. Um, I'm sure some people will say that even this setup is cheesy because we bypass the temperature differential uh, efficiency. But to each their own, this is a sandbox game. There are no rules and no uh, user manual on how to play the game. I'm just here to inform of the possibilities. So thanks for watching guys. 